Hello everyone. Uh, today we're going to discuss arithmetic sequence and series. So this is now the we're going specific. Okay. So what's an arithmetic sequence? Okay. So an arithmetic sequence it's still a sequence. We're in uh, the difference of consecutive terms is always constant. Okay. So it's basically to get to the next term you you're adding a constant number every time or you're subtracting a constant number every time okay so and that constant number is what you call the common difference okay so look into the examples notice that here the first one okay the first one let's see is if it's a arithmetic sequence by just simply adding seven every time okay so here you add 7, you get the next term. While here, this cannot be considered as an arithmetic sequence because the difference between 23 and 15 is 8, 15 and 9 is 6, 9 and 5 is 4, and so on. So it has to be constant, same number every time. Okay? So let's derive the formula. So let's call the first number to be a sub 1. Remember to go to a sub 2, you have to add something from a sub 1. So a sub 2 equals a sub 1 plus d. And then going on to the third term, third term is actually a sub 2 plus d. So, but a sub 2 is the one on red. So simply you get a sub 1 plus d plus d, you get a sub 1 plus 2d. Now a sub 4 is again a sub 3 plus d, but a sub 3 is a sub 1 plus 2d. Add it again with D, that gives you A sub 1 plus 3D. Okay? So you notice there's like sort of like a pattern here. So when it's A sub 5th, it's going to be A sub 1 plus 4D and so on. So that's going to be always 1 less than the term that we're looking for. Okay? So generally the formula would now be A sub N equals A sub 1 plus N minus 1 times d. So this is the formula on finding the nth term of an arithmetic sequence. Okay? There you go. Okay? So let's have some examples. Okay. So write the rule for the nth term of each of the sequence and then find a15. Okay? So basically if you have now 3, 18, 33, 48, First term is 3, and then to get to the next term, you're adding 15. So all you got to do is to simply plug the value in. That's going to be 3 plus n minus 1 times 15, and then distribute the 15. You get 15n minus 15. So simplifying, that's going to be 15n. 3 minus 15 is negative 12. Okay? So to find a15, you just have to fifth, uh, substitute n as 15 here. Okay? So that's going to be 15 times 15, which is 225. 225 minus 12, it's going to be 213. That's going to be the answer. It's not in there, but you just have to uh, use a calculator or use mental calculation. Okay. Now, next one is 55, 47, 39, 31. So first term is 55. Notice to get to the next term, it was subtracted by the same number A. So following the formulas, it's going to be a sub n equals 55 plus n minus 1 times negative 8. So multiply negative 8. So it's going to be 55 minus negative 8n. And negative 8, negative 1 is positive 8. And then that's going to be negative 8n. And then 55 plus 8 is 63. And then you just have to substitute um, 15 for n if you're going to look for 815. Okay? Next, writing a rule given a term and a common difference and graph the rule. But we're not graphing the rule anymore. We just simply get the uh, whatever the rule is, okay? So one term of an arithmetic sequence is negative 45. A okay, sub 19 is negative 45. And the common difference is 3. Okay, write the rule for the nth term, okay? So here we get A sub 19, which means we know N as 19, right? And then D is 3. So this is what we have so far. Which means if I use the formula, which means A sub 19 
equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1 times d, I'll be able to get a sub 1. So which means if I use n as 19, so that's going to be negative 45, a sub 19, which is a sub 1 plus 19 minus 1 times d. And then I just simply plug in 19 and d. And that gives me negative 45, a sub 1, plus 18 times 3. And that gives me negative 45 uh, equals a sub 1 plus 54. And then solve for a sub 1. That gives you subtract 54 to both sides. So that's going to be negative 99. Now, since you get negative 99, you can now get the rule for the n term by going back to the formula, right? So which means a sub n is equal to negative 99 plus n minus 1 times 3. Simplify, you get a sub n equals 3n minus 102. Okay? Now let's go on to the next example. Writing a rule given two terms. So two terms of an arithmetic sequence are a sub 7, which is 17, and a 26 equals 93. Okay? So thing is, we're going to write the rule for the n term. So we're looking for a sub n. Now, let's look what we have so far. So first, we're going to use the formula still, because that's the one we're looking for. But we're going to apply this to each of the two terms. Now, a7 is 17, which means n is 7. We don't know a sub 1. We don't know d. But we can plug this in, right? Okay? Let me explain. The 17 can be explained as a sub 1 plus, okay, 6, n minus 1, which is 7 minus 1 is 6, times d. And then 26, which means 93 here, equals a sub 1 plus n minus 1, 26 minus 1 is 25, times d. So here, we're looking for a sub 1 and d. So here, it's easier if we subtract both. Okay, so 93 minus 17, subtract, is 76, so a sub 1, a sub 1 cancels out. And then 25d minus 6d, that gives me 19d, which means if I solve for d, d equals 4. Now, once I get d equals 4, I can substitute that to any of these two to get a sub 1. So suppose I want to substitute it on the first one. So 93 equals a sub 1 plus 25 times 4 plus d equals 4. So therefore, a sub 1 now becomes negative 7. Which means if I simplify that, that's going to be negative 7 plus n minus 1 times 4, which is I already found my a and d. And then simplify, I get what? 4n now. a sub n equals 4n minus 11. Okay? So, that's how you get the sum or the formula to finding the n term of an arithmetic sequence. Okay? Now, if the sequence is again added, what we have is an arithmetic series. So, the thing is, when we compute for arithmetic series, we compute for the sum. Okay? Let's illustrate. Okay? Suppose I want to get the sum of the first 100 terms, starting from 1. So it's 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4 plus 5 until 100. Okay? Suppose I want to do that. Okay? So which means the sum of the 100 terms is like this. Right? I can also rewrite this in a way that I can start with 100 in the beginning. Right? You guys understand? So what I'm going to do is to add this to this equation and this equation. So S100 plus S100 is 2S100, right? And notice, if I do this, that's going to be 1 times 1 plus 100, 101. 2 plus 99 is 101. 3 plus 98 equals 101 until the last one. 100 uh, plus 1, that's going to be 101. How many 100 ones do you have? That's going to be what? From 1 until what? 100. So that's going to be basically 101 multiplied by 100. So if I just simply want to get the sum, I divide both sides by 2, right? So 101 times 100 divided by 2. This is the sum of the first 100 numbers. 
okay so it's kind of like the same as the formula that you multiply the first 101 the 101 here okay and then the 100 so generally the formula for the sum of the arithmetic progression basically is this okay so that's going to give you n times the first term plus the last term divided by 2. Going back here, okay, so that's going to give you, you can separate 101 as 100 and 1, right? So 101 is actually 100 plus 1. So it's going to be 100, which is the last term, and the 1, which is the first term. And then n here is 100 divided by 2. That's the reason why you got that number there, okay? So, like, say, for example, if you want to sum, get the sum of the series below. So this is the summation of 3i plus 7 from i equals to 1 to 20. So first you need to get a sub 1, and you need to get a of 20, right? Just simply substitute when i is 1, and then when i is 20, you get those two numbers. Which means my n is actually what? 20, okay? So substitute s sub 20 using the formula as n is 20 times 10 plus 67 divided by 2. You get 7, 7. So it's pretty much easy, okay? Let's have a word problem. So this one's from the textbook. So you're making a house of cards similar to this one, okay? So write the rule for the number of cards in the nth row when the top row is 1. So this is row 1, under that is row 2, under that is row 3. So the question is, how many cards do you need to make a house of cards with 12 rows? Okay, so let's start to answer this one. Okay, let's look at this one. So which means the first row contains 3 cards. Okay, the second row contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 cards. And then the one below it that gives you 9 cards. So it's kind of like a sequence of starts with 3, 6, and 9, right? which means my first term is 3, my common difference is 3. So I can get now the root. Just simply plug in the values, which means my a sub n now is actually 1, 3n. So that's the root. Okay, so where n is the number of rows. The first row will have 3 cards, the second row will have 6 cards, the third row will have 9 cards, and so on. That's letter A. Now, if you want to find the sum for the first 12 rows, which means are going to end with going to be 12. So, which means we're going to use the sum, S of 12. First term is, again, 3. And the 12th term will have 36 cards. So, if I add them all up, substitute the formula. So, N is 12. 3 plus 36 divided by 2. And that gives me 234. So, if we have to have a... Um, 12 row house of cards it will give it, it will require 234 cards okay so our online classwork is on Delta math it's under the title uh, arithmetic sequences and series and the deadline of which is April 30 okay so that's gonna be the deadline so that's it for today, okay?